Hey guys, welcome back. A bit noisy, as you can see over my shoulder there's got a bit of activity going on. Uh, that is Mopar L of uh, Mopar L's YouTube channel. Uh, he's helped me out a number of times and it's uh, payback time. So, <laughs> although he's working and I'm videoing, so go figure. Uh, but in all reality, he's uh, cleaning an 8.8 .8 Ford rear axle up. Uh, he's cleaning the bracket. We just hit it with a plasma cutter and cut some brackets off it. Uh, he's cleaning it up, getting it ready to be narrowed. Uh, so that's going to be uh, like this morning's little adventure is narrowing an 8.8 .8 Ford. Now, for those of you thinking, wondering what that's going into, it's probably going into a Mustang. You'd be wrong. It's going. It's going into a 63 Lark, a Studebaker Lark. So, and the Studebaker Lark is getting a 5.7 late model Hemi in it. Uh, so yeah, not your. So we've got a Hemi motor, a Studebaker Lark, and a Ford 8.8 .8 rear. Now the beauty with the 8.8 .8 rear, uh, you know, it shares the bolt pattern with the uh, Mopar. Uh, very cheap. You got picked up a limited slip unit, a, a limited slip, complete rear end, disc brakes. Uh, 4.1 ratio from the factory, it was a low, that's a little uncommon, they're usually 370 odd, uh, but he found a 4.1 limited slip, disc brake rear, 250 bucks, can't go wrong, you know, that, that's cheap hot rodding. So uh, yeah, he's got cleaning that up, I'm going to just turn the camera around and we'll just kind of zoom in, see what's going on here. Hey Al, how you doing man? Oh, just losing some weight. Let's have a look here. <laughs> We'll get that the right way around. That's better. How you doing, Al? Good. Oh, doing all right, man. Uh, so yeah, this is what we're doing. Cleaning up. All the brackets are gone. Got your old brackets down here. So we buzz those off, getting them cleaned up, and then we'll show you how we go about marking this thing out and uh, setting it up in a jig and getting the burn together, back together. So back in a second. Okay, it's all cleaned up. I've just been marking these. This is where we're going to cut. It's two and seven eighths of an inch. That's how much shorter the short axle is than the long axle. So that is gonna give us the overall width that we want. Now making sure this is square, it's quite a simple little trick. You get a nice bit of cardboard with a, with a machine cut edge on it, nice straight edge. Wrap it around your piece of tube, and obviously not like that, but you get it squared up, which will be a little bit of fiddling. You'll get it. Like that. Make sure it's nice and snug. Then you can mark around. Move in. Mark around. And just cuts a square. We are going to put this in a jig. I've got the, the shaft that goes through here with the hockey pucks. And you know we'll show you that as we move along. And yeah, so let's get cutting. We also want to have a reference point to keep it this clock the, the same way so that is doesn't affect the straightness of the axle but it does affect where your your disc brakes are gonna you don't want like one caliper down here and one caliper up here he was now making a line across for a reference point These two little marks I've made here, I've made five inches apart. All right, this is just another way of double checking. So we know that's five inches, okay? And you write it on here so you don't forget. Or you go, was it five or was it six? Oh, damn. <laughs> so we cut out our two and seven eighths out of here. We take two and seven eighths from five inches, you know, which is gonna give us the balance and then as we put them together we recheck this measurement here and make sure we haven't overcut it or undercut it. Yeah, that should should give us two and one eighths between these two lines instead of five inches. Uh, yeah, just as a double check. An old guy once said to me, check, recheck, double check, you recheck. And don't forget to check again. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, we so broke it. We broke it. So was that two and seven eights or three and seven eights? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that 
Uh oh. No going back now. No going back now. All right. We've been busy. We got the pucks in place. Yeah. So this is our piece we need to weld on, obviously. We got the puck in there. That runs in where the, where the seal, norm, seal and bearing go. So that gets smacked in there. We've got our pucks in the middle uh, with the bar going through and then you bolt your, your um, bearing, side bearing caps down to lock them in place. So we know that's straight. And same at the other end, we've got the puck on here, which is hammered in. You know, the bar still, still rotates, but the, the, the puck is hammered into here. So that's, we know that's a straight line all the way through here. And then it's, slide that on, line your marks up. Now, that measurement there should be two and an eighth. We've got two and three sixteenths. So we're gonna, we've got to bevel these, this cut back anyway. And you can see there's a couple of little gaps here where the, you know, the sawzall is not the most accurate thing to be cutting it with. But you know, it's not, it's not a bad line. Hey, it did its job. It did its job. So we'll do some bit of beveling. We'll get that gap down. We'll, that straight line we drew through here gives us our clocking. You know, we know we're clocked in the same place we used to be. So here we'll do a bit of beveling here. Um, trim a little bit off just to get that to that uh, two and seven eighths or two and one eighths you know, to a, a removal of two and seven eighths. And we can start burning it in. All right, there let's go. Got a fraction too much. Let's see where we need to. whisk them more. Section long. So we'll see where we're actually, where it's in, where it's touching. Okay. And new length. So that lines up, our distance there is right. Yeah, time to start welding. Uh, to break out the welder. All right, break out your welder. You need a decent sized welder. This is a 175 Eastwood MIG, which you know, wound up on full, full noise. That'll get it done. Now because I'm fussy. <laughs> I'm just going to check again. Make sure I didn't screw it up. One. Yep. That is now two and one eighths. Okay, yep. Can't be too careful. We'll rotate at 180.
making sure it doesn't roll off the jack stand. Ah. I'll have to edit that bit out. Yeah. And let it cool for a while. Don't don't run it all the way around. You're gonna get it so hot that it's gonna move. And uh, the bar holds, does hold it straight, but if you put enough heat and enough warpage into it, you'll jam the bar. Like you'll end up having to hammer the bar out because the axle housing's crooked. So be patient, do a bit. That's probably about a one inch run. Um, that's enough. Let it cool down, walk away, have a cold drink, which is what I'm going to do right now. All right, so we got to weld it kind of like 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Now we're going to go. Uh, three o'clock and nine o'clock. Oh, well, it's well there. Okay, that's probably what tripped us up before. Stay. And once we've done, you know, once this cools down again, we'll, we'll basically fill the gaps between the welds. And be done. Yeah. I've got to put it back together, but, you know, that's not my job. I'm just doing the welding, but. <laughs> that's my job. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, take another break, let it cool down. I usually keep an eye on this, this one, an eye on it. I keep checking that this is turning, it's still free. Make sure something hasn't moved. Um, so yeah, it's pretty easy to turn. Which means everything's, everything's staying true. It's what you want. We'll let it cool down a bit more. Getting close, getting close. When you got it up at full power like that, it really does pour some heat in there though. So you gotta, you don't get to do a lot of welding and you gotta let it cool down for 10 minutes. 
um, and resists the urge to put anything like cold water on it or any water, um, that will twist the housing. That's uh, I've seen wheel alignment places do that where they'll they'll just get the housing that's a little tweaked and they'll get it glowing like cherry red and then put a wet cold rag on it and you, the housing just moves. It shrinks it in so you got to let it cool naturally. Yeah, don't be tempted to rush it. So, yep, we'll just walk away. Ten minutes, we'll come back. All right, well there we are. We'll weld it up. Ready to go uh, underneath a Studio Baker Lark. So yeah, hopefully that gave you a little bit of uh, insight into how you narrow a rear axle. Obviously, if you you know you. This one was getting down to a certain width and the bonus was you could just buy one short side axle, shorten the long side and you get a, a diff that's like at the, at the width you need. Uh, we did one a while ago putting a late model Mustang into, a, uh, into an early model Mustang and that required, you know, it was about, gosh I think it was like five inches off each side because um, we went a little bit narrower than normal and he started off with a wider diff than normal. Um, so yeah, doing narrowing both ends is really just you know the same process, just mirrored on the other side. Uh, so yeah, and uh, alternatively, order a housing already done. You know that's that's your call. Um, it depends how um, ambitious or you know how brave you're feeling. It's always fun doing something yourself though. Um, and I don't. I've seen people do it using um, like pieces of angle iron brace to the tubing to hold it straight and. I think you'd probably get away with that, um, but yeah, you know, it's nice having the right tools, so which you know it's not not at everybody's disposal. So, um, but if you're really stuck for one, send it to me. I'll narrow it up for you. All right, guys. Well, take it easy, uh, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.